see here and I'm in the desert. I don't know if you can hear me with the wind blowing. It may be inaudible. It may, I don't know if you can hear the sound. Let me know in the comments down below. But we're here on the west bank of Aswan, checking out some rarely visited tombs. Typically those that come here either see the Aswan Quarry, which is on the other side of the Nile over there. And the Aswan Quarry, the Nubian Museum, the Temple of Philae, the, the Isis Temple. Few of those that actually come this side to the West Bank. These are rarely visited tombs. They have few I see. And I'm actually exploring for the first time. So I want to take you along on the journey with me and we can go check this out together. Come on, guys. I'm here today with Karina. In the distance and she's already making her way through i don't know too much about these tombs so i can't really tell you too much we'll be exploring this together on this adept expedition thanks for joining us so this one's interesting we have some hieroglyphic reliefs here Ready, ah, uh, let's go inside. Some legs. Absolutely amazing. You probably won't see footage of this anywhere else on YouTube. What's up, Bob? Happy New Year's. Happy New Year to everybody. Everybody tuning in. If you're new here and you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to receive updates for future notifications when I drop new videos like this one. My live videos, my vlogs, and my investigations into the ancient mysteries. Here we have these cylindrical shapes. These were likely going to be columns, or were columns, now destroyed. And let's see, this looks like it might have been an architrave. Is that the B? Beat, BT. I'll just capture all the footage of this and then we'll take a look at the glyphs later. Here we see tool marks of the Masons. Happy New Year! Weather is great. Sorry to hear it's rainy and gray where you're at, but as you can see, it's very nice and sunny here in Aswan where my family and I, we came here um, doing a private, uh, private tour for a private client. And I also have my family here with me in Aswan. We celebrated New Year's here in Aswan very interesting to celebrate new year with the nubians and look in the distance over here what's up all right in the distance over here you can see they're working on uh, an excavation they're actually digging let me zoom in there you guys see that okay so let's check out some of these tombs together you'll be exploring with me for the first time I might lose signal here and there as I go into the tombs. If I do, I'll back out, so just stick with me. Look, these are all cut into the rock. Absolutely amazing. So what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six columns. Each marked with glyphs. We have some art, what, uh, maybe architraves on the ground and columns and pillars, pillars on the back. Let's see. Uh, what do we have here? Ah, absolutely amazing. Look at this. He's harpooning or spearing something that is now missing, right? And they're on the boat of the skiff here. What do we have? This looks like a little alcove niche for offerings. Yep, he's seated on his throne. The animal legs, is that loaves of bread? We have the leg of the cow and over here taking a hit of that blue lotus. Glad you appreciate it, metal plated face job. Thanks for joining us. And for those watching this video after the live, I'm talking to the people in the comments just so you guys know. Again, another hit of blue lotus over here. These guys are really into the blue lotus. Another band of glyphs. Let me just capture this so we can read it later. And up above, it looks like herdsmen. 
after the live, I'll come back and take photos of all of this and document it and probably do a blog on Adept Expedition so we can break down the glyphs and everything. Happy New Year, Ken. Happy New Year, everyone. This is interesting. Look at these dogs. Very cool. Huh. The tail, the curly cue here, it almost reminds me of the the higher glyph. What do we have? A lot to take in. The big figures, no, they're not giants. If you subscribe to the giant idea, no, the big figure is usually the person that is buried in the tomb. The Egyptians had a way of honoring them by making that person appear larger than everyone else. And a lot of times the smaller figures, if they have the side lock of youth, it's their offspring. What do we have over here? Still on the outside of the tomb, another dog. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Look at this, we have the left hand on the right shoulder. So from a symbolist perspective, the left hand is the receptive or passive hand on the right shoulder, which is the active um, part of the body. They're all doing this. Yes, Bob, they look amazing in the light. It's perfect. Well, actually the sun is just behind me. So as the sun comes over and, and shines on these, it'll get even better. Again, left hand, right shoulder. This is interesting. Almost looks like they're teaching sign language. Not sure. I, I think there's Happy New Year, Alana. I think this is, oh, I forget what this means. I have to look this up later. The connection in an embrace, not quite touching, almost an embrace. Not a reset, not a reset. Um, what's going on here? Was that a temple? Had, had you met Zahi? Yes, I've met Zahi. I've taken a photo with Zahi. You can see that on my Facebook page. And I was actually uh, just recently featured in, someone's asking if I met Zahi. I was just featured in a documentary film. You can watch it if you're in the Netherlands. It's actually number two in the Netherlands right now. It premiered on the same day that Graham Hancock's Ancient Apocalypse appeared. It's called The Ancient Mysteries of Egypt with Rude Gillet. If you know who Rude Gillet is, he's, um, and I'm slightly mispronouncing his name, but he's a famous uh, footballer, or as we would say in the States, a soccer player from the Netherlands, massive athlete in the 90s, one of the world's best. And he came to Egypt on his quest uh, it, with the inquiry into the ancient mysteries. And so producers called me to provide the counter narrative to Zahi with respect to the Sphinx, because Zahi says there's no more secrets. And I just point out some evidence that would suggest there may be more. And so a lot of big names in the documentary. Ser it's a documentary series. I'm in the season finale with Zahi. Eric Von Doniken is also in it. By the way, I don't agree with any of these guys. I'm not into, you know, I'm not a big ancient aliens guy. I'm more of an ancient humans in a higher state of consciousness than an ancient aliens guy. Not to say that I don't believe in the possibility of extraterrestrial life, but I don't think these archeological sites provide good evidence for, for aliens. And I don't entirely agree with everything Zahi and the mainstream has to say either. I truly approach everything as an independent. So you can see in here, strictly independent. And so you can see in here where they burrowed their way in to look for the tombs. Anyway, let's end. Oh, we can't enter this one because it's locked. Let's see. Happy New Year, Ronald. Okay, here we go. Some information. So this is the tomb of Sarenpet from the Middle Kingdom. It's pretty old. Got my own style, Johnny. That's right. We, uh, when they drop bombs, we're in the middle, we remain calm. We don't, we don't choose sides. We look at things from multiple perspectives without bias. Wow, these are some of the biggest pillars of columns I've seen to date. And then you almost have this arch. So we can't go in this one, this one's locked. There's gonna be some we can go in. Let's go around and look at some of the other tombs together. Again, this is my first time here. So I don't have too much information yet. I have to study this site. I'm just exploring going into it, experiencing it for the first time. And then I will look at the excavation reports and information later um, and see what I can come up with, if there is anything. 
sometimes it's really hard to find published literature about these places. Ah, another one looks like it's sealed. For certain, there'll be some we can go inside. This one, no dice. Let's give you guys a view. Not much to see, it's very dark. Master Monkey's asking if there's any paranormal experiences here. Not here, right? Not right now in this moment. That's not to say I haven't experienced unusual things in Egypt, as I have, as I talk about during my tours, specifically at Karnak. And mainly when it comes to Sekhmet, but that's a subject for another video. That one's blocked. 350. 35N. I don't think we can go down here either. This one's closed. As you can see, I'm pretty much here. We're here by ourselves. Karina's off in the distance somewhere looking at the tombs. And not really have seen any of the tourists here. Nobody really comes here. It's not included on most tour itineraries because it's a little bit out of the way. And people usually come here for the Aswan Quarry, Island of Philae, the Temple of Isis, maybe the Nubian Museum, and then they go back. We don't usually include this on my tours either, but okay, we're going in. If I lose connection, I'll step back out, so just bear with me. You guys ready to go in and explore the tombs? Let's go. And we do want to be cautious of bats. Oh, horrible smell right away. Bat guano. You're from Boston, Metal Plate says. Yeah, that's obvious. Park the car in the Harvard Yard. I don't pronounce my R's very well. I have to really think about it and try to properly pronounce my R sound. Uh, from Boston, but lived in California for about 10 years before my family and I moved to Egypt, where we live now in Luxor. More Blue Lotus sniffing going on. He's got offerings of bread, that's probably their offspring. Bread, and is that, that might be alabaster, it's hard to make out. What do we have here? Mostly deteriorated, whoa, it's a big crack. A lot of times the Egyptians would build along natural, this is probably from excavation, but the ancient Egyptians would build a, a carve along fracture lines. As we'll see when I go over to the Aswan quarry, like with the unfinished obelisk, they would, you know, carve things out according to fracture patterns. Hmm. Okay. First time in here. Yes, Johnny, I have, ooh. I can hear bats in the distance. Oh, I really hesitate around the bats. Want to avoid rabies. You can't get rabies from bats if one bites you. Oh man, okay. Uh, cover my eyes. Oh, you guys. For certain there's gonna be bats in here. Oh, you can hear them in the distance. I think that's about as far as I'm gonna go. The smell is really bad, and I don't want them flying into my face. Let's see what else we have. Whew. Ah, that's the other thing. You don't wanna to spend too much time in the tombs of these old places. Breathing this stuff in. Okay, there's another one sealed here. Dilapidated lintel here. Nisut D Hotep. Oh, okay. D so it's D Nisut Hotep. This is an offering formula. So that's the Nisut royal sign. This pyramid shaped thing is D, which means to give usually. And then this is a Hotep. So this together is a phrase. Nisut D. Uh, no, it's actually D Nisut Hotep is how you'd read it. It's almost like honorific transposition. It works a little differently. I've explained that in some other videos. It's an Egyptological convention. You see it in the cartouches where 
the sign for Ra or Ray comes first, but you don't pronounce it till later. So similar, they change the word order here, but this basically says that this is an offering formula. So then it's gonna tell you all the offerings. I'm not gonna sit here and read everything glyph by glyph, but I'll capture footage and we'll look later. It looks like they're collecting something here. Huh. So they got this one blocked off. They don't want us in here. You can see it looks like someone destroyed it or they're trying to build it back up. And there's an opening up here. I'll just stick you guys in for a moment. That one doesn't go anywhere anyway. Just a false door a niche in the background. If anyone's interested in joining one of my esoteric Egypt tours or ancient technology and esoteric symbolism tours, I have one coming up in March, co-hosted by, well, myself and Johanna James. And then we just announced another tour, which I'm also really excited for. Um, this one, we had an amazing tour last September with Johanna James, by the way, such a great group, such a magnificent tour. Johnny's in the comments right now on the live. He was there, he'll attest to this. And it sold out really quick. So we're gonna be doing it again this March. But I also have another exciting tour coming up in September with Matt Sibson from the popular Ancient Architects YouTube channel. This will be Matt's uh, first time in Egypt. This is an unprecedented, this is your unprecedented invitation to join, well, your cordial invitation to join us for an unprecedented event as it will be Ancient Architects first ever community adventure in conjunction with Adept Expeditions. So it'll be myself and Matt Sipson from Ancient Architects this September in Egypt. You can learn more about both of these tours at adeptexpeditions.com. And if you're interested in joining us in Turkey, Johanna James and I are going to go to Turkey in October and then Karina Itzkoatle and I will do our annual Mysteries of the Maya tour, esoteric symbolist tour of the Yucatan as we go through the land of the Maya in November. Lon is asking, have you seen more stones with hieroglyphs? Many. Oh, I can hear bats in here. I have to climb up here. Oh, I want to be careful. Oh, be careful in here. Don't want to fall in. tunnel that goes further back that way. Oh, I can hear the bats. Can you guys hear them? There's a false door. Another little false door here. These logs, well, it, it's stone. Oh, is this actually wood? No, that's stone. But this is meant to replicate the stone. It looks like, oh, it's just a rust. These are meant to replicate the organic matter. In, back in the old days, pre-dynastic, they'd use the wooden, wooden, or early dynastic even, they'd use wooden beams on the ceilings and so they replicate that in stone as they're doing here. Oh, again, this is my first time in here taking you guys along on this virtual adept expedition. It almost looks like that same fracture that we've seen in the other temple, uh, the other tomb. Oh. Hornet's nest. If you're enjoying this video, please do give it a like and remember to leave a comment under the actual video, not just in the live chat when you're all done. It really helps me out. It's one of the ways you can support this channel because it will signal to YouTube 
that I'm getting engagement and hopefully YouTube will open up visibility and, and show my content to more eyeballs. So I need your help to get the content out there. Oh, what do we got here? Not nothing too much. There we got. Yeah, so. Okay, so we have a small false door and then a large one. Big crack down the center here. What do you say? You guys want to go down there? Let me know in the comments below. Should we go down or should we continue? I suppose I'll at least stick the camera in. We one last bone internet curve, Johnny says. One last bone. Wow, look at this one. Look at those columns and steps. This is amazing. Wow, I've never seen anything quite like this before. All right, guys, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like. I'm gonna go around and, and get more footage. You'll be able to watch the footage. I, I'm gonna collect a lot of footage here and then write a blog about this on Adept Expeditions. Johnny says Temple of Tomb. It almost looks like a temple, but it's definitely a tomb. Um, and so, I will, I'll, I'll put up some videos about what I find here. I hope you guys enjoyed this sneak peek. This is NEXT for Adept Expeditions, signing out. Peace out, everybody. Remember, leave a comment under the actual video if you want to help support the channel. And if you're in a position to financially support the channel, you can do so by joining my Patreon. I have some really good benefits there. And also, you're more than welcome to join us on one of our tours of Egypt at adeptexpeditions.com. Peace out, everybody.